afternoon and thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you. Right, and let's begin by understanding the basics because you're talking about women in business and you appear to be in an industry where you're doing your business online, uh, yeah. getting to be in a position to um, disburse several products. What yeah. led you here? Well, um, women in business is um, uh, tough in uh, an environment without COVID. So when COVID came, then of course uh, it's tougher. Mm -hmm. But we have to thrive on and uh, push on. So I'm in the business of um, distributing um, alcoholic beverages, non-alcoholic beverages, dry foods, and kitchenware, both mm -hmm. online and offline. Mm -hmm. So we have a physical shop, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, you have a physical shop. So yes. how many years has it been? Because you're talking about the COVID-19 pandemic and now? We actually just clocked a year in January. Wow, that's interesting. So yes. all, your, all your life, the life of your business has been during COVID-19. Exactly, exactly. All right, and when you are getting into this, what yeah. exactly was the gap that you're able to identify so that you think that uh, this is the niche that I want to not to focus on? Actually, when we started out, um, we actually started out the business as a bulk, purely bulk supplies um, for the products I've mentioned. And then COVID came and we had to actually rethink about how we do business. We weren't actually online. Mm -hmm. We were purely a bulk supplies business. So we were targeting institutions that actually buy stuff in bulk, like your bars, um, maybe your uh, uh, children homes, um, restaurants and the likes. But then come COVID, most of these businesses actually closed down. So I'm like, okay, these are the same products that people actually use at home. The dry food, your rice, your mm -hmm. flour, mm -hmm. um, cooking oil. So we actually had to open a website during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, we had to partner with e-commerce partners so that we can also in, in improve our last mile deliveries. So th all this actually happened during COVID. We had to rethink about how we do. Mm -hmm. So then now moving on along the year during COVID times, then now we were able to actually focus on both bulk supplies and um, your normal household supplies. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how is it going? Because yes, if your focus begins at the bulk, but then again, the clientele may be um, changing over yeah. time because yeah. of the circumstances that are yeah. going. Well, it's been quite an interesting journey, I must say. It comes with a lot of challenges, um, especially uh, we all know FMCG uh, margins are quite thin, so you have to really focus on numbers. So that's why we actually had to rethink our business because if one of the business units is actually sort of closed down and the hours of operation are limited, then you also have to increase your numbers by rethinking and introducing another business unit. Mm -hmm. So all we're doing is looking for numbers. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you have to talk about uh, women in business, are there yeah. any specific um, issues that you've been able to establish and say that this is because mm -hmm. of uh, your gender or mm -hmm. the challenges that you are encountering in the line of business? Is there mm -hmm. anything that you've seen that you you'd say this is because of your gender? Well, not directly. I must say, um, as a nation, we have improved um, our conception about women uh, in, in business. So not directly, but you can hear in the tones uh, when you're talking to someone on the phone and they're like asking for the owner of the business and you're like, I am the owner of the business. <laughs> um, so, but they're, they're not outrightly, um, I mean, uh, rude or anything, but mm -hmm. you can see the shock in their faces. Mm -hmm. But outrightly, um, Nothing really negative, mm -hmm. um, nothing that any other business um, does not go through on a day-to-day Day-to-day, um, day uh, right? Hours. And when you talk about um, the businesses and the trades that uh, people get involved in, there is yeah. um, that perception, but also backed by research, that um, a majority of women get into business without a prior business skills. So mm -hmm. when you're getting into this, I don't know what your training is, but yeah. when you're getting into this, mm -hmm. what are those uh, skills that you decided this is actually? Uh, very essential for me to uh -huh. start this business and now you've been seeing that uh, they are working for you uh -huh. that you'd say to someone else who may want to start a business that you need to first of all acquire certain skills the one important skill i would say is at least have some basic finance um, background okay you don't have to do a master's i was lucky i did a, a master's in uh, mm -hmm. finance and banking um, but I must say that has really come in handy because day in, day out, you deal with finances as an owner of a business. Mm -hmm. When you're receiving um, goods, you have to analyze the invoices. When you're doing your payroll, you have to analyze mm -hmm. um, 
mathematics is there. As in mathematics is everywhere. So finance is a very, very key aspect in business. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is the one skill I must say that you need to have. All right, yes. Penny, stay here with us. But uh, for now, <laughs> let's cross over to the coastal uh, city of Mombasa, where we understand that uh, Frances Mutalaki is speaking to Ma Masi Wanjiro, who quit her employment after four years. She then used her own savings to start a business, and nine years later, she has held today selling computer and electronic accessories. Frances Mutalaki, good afternoon, and what can you tell us about uh, her journey and what lesson, lesson she's been able to learn over the past nine years? <laughs> Well, very good afternoon, uh, Sam. And uh, I'm within the island in one of the business uh, uh, premises here on 100% by a lady. And uh, she does uh, some uh, ac ac accessories in terms of computer and uh, laptops here. And for uh, nine years, she has been operating here at this facility. And she says that uh, she has come a long way, given that uh, she was employed in one of the uh, IT companies here in Mombasa. And I want to speak to her so that she can talk to us. Talk to us maybe your journey since uh, nine years ago and where you are currently. Okay, my name is Mas Wanjiro. Uh, I've, been em I've been employed for four years and uh, after I was employed four years, I saved some money and uh, since uh, computers is my, is my passion, I always wanted to start my own company. So after four years, after I was employed, I saved some cash and I started to open my, my own farm. It has been nine years. It's been a long journey, not easy being a woman in a man's domination. But I, I thank God for this far I've come. It's not easy due to, especially when the COVID came, it's like everything went into a standstill. But I thank God we're still pushing. Yeah. Maybe in, in terms of these uh, nine years that you have been in the industry, what, how, what would you say in terms of the state of uh, women in business, basically? Uh, it's not easy, it's tough, especially when it comes to tendering. Uh, tendering is not easy unless unless you have you have all the documents like the way uh, when you do tender you must have uh, you must be a taxpayer you must have uh, tax compliance you must have work for and uh, you know you must have those requirements and for me I can't complain it has been a good journey because I have all the requirements and yeah it's been good in these nine years that you've been in business basic have you engaged yourself in any uh, training so that you can uh, better your business i uh, not really why because <laughs> uh in uh, in college i did computers and also did uh marketing do you think it's something uh, nice yeah it's good it's good i can't complain i would encu encourage women to, to do business. And there are some opportunities that are being offered both by the government and the NGOs. Maybe have you tried in that area and what, has, uh, the, what is the experience so far? Yeah, I've been, uh, I've got tenders with the parastatos and government and uh, not bad, can complain. What are some of the challenges facing so far? Okay, challenges are finance, especially now that the it's, it's it's down. And uh, like most of the parasitos, when you supply, sometimes it's, it's hard to pay, yeah? So maybe you have like uh, 10, 10 corporate clients you need to supply and some are not paying and you don't have finance, you see? So those are among the challenges, I would say it's, it's facing women. What do you want to see yourself in the next five years now? <laughs> uh, well, 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 well very far from here yeah and uh, do you regret living here job no 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 since i was a young girl i always wanted to do business and since computers it's my computers has been my passion i thank god i'm here yeah are you are you mentoring any other girl or any other lady oh yeah i mentor so many boy boy child and girl child i mentor how uh, through my through my social media accounts, through WhatsApp, Facebook, yeah. And possibly how how you have, how have you been able to grow your clientele, basically? I do a lot of uh, marketing. 
uh, social media marketing and uh, also visiting clients, referrals, yeah. Thanks a lot. That is Wanjiru uh, uh, talking to us in, in regard to her business. She says that nine years so far so good and uh, there are a number of challenges as a lady she's facing. But of course uh, she needs more support in terms of funding and the opportunities that are there in terms of the national government, the 30%. But also the issue of tendering also being uh, one of the uh, challenges that uh, lay women are facing in business. But uh, uh, one of the examples as she says that she also mentoring other uh, women and men also in terms of the butcher to be able to be able to have uh, uh, something to put on the table and as she says that she continues to make life better back to you son very, very interesting conversation here with, with uh, Masi Wanjiru and Francis Mtalaki and congratulations to her because you understand that the majority of the businesses that are started uh, they get to go down in the first three years so she's already in her nine years and now you're in your first year <laughs> getting into the Part second yeah well, let, let's talk about um, the source of financing because different reports will say that uh, the biggest challenge for not just women um, sponsored enterprises but also a majority of women face those challenges when it it comes to accessing finance um, if you know the Kenyan so society if you need some money to start a business you have yeah. to rely on your savings or maybe mm -hmm. the merry-go-round the chamas you can talk about yeah but all those challenges in approaching uh, commercial loans that you may get from financial or commercial banks mm -hmm. what has it been for you and what has been your main source of financing that you'd say has kept you steady for one year well um like you mentioned, it's very tough to get financing from a financial institution, especially when you go and tell them, hey, I want to start out, here's my, my business plan, no matter how um, Harvard it may look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, it's always advisable to start with what you have and start small. So my background is actually in tech uh, companies, and we were always, always um, uh, taught about starting small and then scaling up as you go. Mm -hmm. So that has been the biggest lesson that I took away with me from employment in the tech industry. So starting small. I actually started from one of the bedrooms in my house. Mm. I used to supply before I had an office <laughs> or a physical shop. Mm -hmm. So I used to buy, um, I told people that, hey, you know what, I have some pretty good classes because um, we also do kitchenware, have some pretty good classes, very good price. So give me your order. And that's how I started out. So slowly, slowly, and then um, including a category at a time. So starting small mm -hmm. with what you have. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, um, I don't think um, it's that easy to access finance, especially when you're starting out. So the best right. thing is to actually start small and then the money that you get from starting small, reinvest it back mm -hmm. and grow gradually and be patient. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so because uh, different reports say that um, majority of women owned businesses will tend to focus on uh, food processing, mm -hmm. clothing, agro processing and horticultural. Yeah. But basically in, uh, in the areas of service, services and trade. Yeah. So how do you determine what mm -hmm. business to get into? Because are the, the moment if um, you've seen what the economy is like yes. and um, the almost slumping that you saw yeah. uh, I believe in the second and third quarter of um, the, the financial year yeah. uh, rather last year yeah. so when you're there yeah. you don't have a job probably yeah. and yeah. you're s trying to think on what to get into mm -hmm. as a business person mm -hmm. how do you get to identify and establish that, that idea? Identify gaps in the market goes back to the basics of uh, marketing in school, identify a gap and try and fill that gap. So um, I used to do consultancy before I actually started a uh, business. So when I was employed, I used to also have side hustles. So I used to do some consultancy and uh, back when I was in school, I actually worked in the hospitality industry as a part-time mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. So at least I had some knowledge about the hospitality industry. When I did um, consultancy in the hospitality industry, I also could identify the gaps. Mm -hmm. So with time, all the knowledge that you've come to accumulate, open your eyes and um, look around you. The, the gaps are not so far away from what you've been dealing with every day. Right. So try and identify the gaps in the environment that you're currently in. So that's how I was able to identify a gap and of course fill it in. Okay. Yes. All right. And of course, um, as you map out where you want to go, um, yeah. Masi gives a very interesting answer there that uh, in five years time she wants to be very far. Yeah. Uh, how do you drive the business so that yes, you grow, but also ensure that you're sustainable in the longer term? Um, Having um, 
having stuff that you can actually rely on, which is also another very challenging thing to achieve in Kenya currently, um, is what is going to propel you to the next stage. Because let's face it, as a business owner, you cannot do everything. You cannot be involved in the day-to-day -day running and expect to also in, be involved in the strategic aspect of the company. Mm -hmm. So you need to train staff to handle your day-to-day -day operations so that you're able to focus on strategy and growth. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that is the key factor to ensuring that you're able to focus on growth as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's broaden it a little bit because yeah. you look at um, the existing policy is like uh, Francis is talking about um, the access to government procurement opportunities of yeah. 2013 or rather yeah. announced by President Kenyatta in 2013 yeah. that 30% uh, percent of procurement in government would be left for women, persons yeah. with disability and the youth, yeah. all of them clustered together. Yeah. Uh, when you look at the policies yeah. from your experience in the one year that you've been at it and also yeah. what you observed while you were employed, yeah. what are the few things that you think can be changed whether through legislation or policy-wise mm -hmm. or even mm -hmm. the practice mm -hmm. to favor women? Um, policy is a good start, I must commend the government on that. But the next step now is actually the implementation how are they actually ensuring that the policies that they've set out are actually implemented? Where can the women get information? Because I can, I can bet that most women know about the policies. I mean, everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. Okay, not everyone, but majority of us know that we can access government procurement services. I, I mean, um, uh, women or uh, people with disabilities and all that. But how do we, act, what's the next step? the Im implementation, where can we get the information on next steps? Mm -hmm. Because that I think is a gap that um, is lacking. Because where do I go? Mm -hmm. Okay, I know what I need, but where do I go after that? Where, who are our mentors? We have women leaders, can they also come in and step up and also tell us, hold forums? and tell us, okay, so when you, when you have your papers in order, now this is the next step. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, uh, the reports that will say that uh, getting a good education is it's a good starting point in as yeah. far as that it will give you uh, the background information. Yeah. It does not make you an entrepreneur, but no, being in the practice is what does. Yes. From finance and banking and working in the technology sector, yeah. what are the differences you've seen between the theory you learned in class and the practicalities of the enterpris enterprising culture that uh, you'd get into? Oh, wow, it's huge. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Where can I say? Well, where can I start? I mean, um, the saying, the Kenyan saying, we took a ground, <laughs> is actually very, very true. Right. Because um, things are not, especially the difference between the corporate world and the business world is so huge. In mm -hmm. the corporate world, we have policies, we have organization structures, and everything seems to go as smooth and as we've actually put it out in the policy documents and organization charts and all that. Mm -hmm. But when you come to running a business, it's very, very different. When you talk to a supplier and agree that this is the day that they're delivering, trust me, you have to follow up. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean that that's the day that they're actually going to um, deliver. I can give you a very good example. Like last week, uh, we, we had agreed with a certain supplier that, you know what, they'll be bringing for us our products. We place an order by, say, Monday, and by Wednesday they deliver. Mm -hmm. So Wednesday evening we're calling them, hey, what happened to our goods? You were supposed to deliver. Oh, we had some changes on our end. You'll now be getting your deliveries on Friday. Mm -hmm. Did they keep their second word? The second one was kept. The second word was kept, I mean. Uh, but, I mean, some communication would have been proper from the end. Mm -hmm. So this happens in the corporate world, but in the business world, hustler nation, you, you have to... <laughs> so we just said that. Yeah. <laughs> that might be tongue you political. Have to, <laughs> you have to actually um, follow up. Mm -hmm. Like, you really have to be on your toes. It's, it's not the same, really. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay, so, so where do you get the patience? Because um, it appears like um, quite a bit, of, a lot of work, and mm -hmm. knowing that uh, uh, women in mm -hmm. nature, um, mm -hmm. they, w w like, according to reports, they said that um, yeah. they are mostly, they mostly get into business because they haven't gotten an opportunity to mm -hmm. exercise what they may have learned. Yeah. And nobody prepares you for those eventualities. So yeah. how do you build uh, that backbone to ensure that you're so strong to the extent that whatever the challenges you witness, you're able to weather them? Um, for me, it's the motivation. Uh, based on where I've come from and where I am right now, I cannot afford to go back to where I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I loved uh, being employed, but mm -hmm. the flexibility I get um, with being self-employed, I mm -hmm. cannot trade that for everything. Right. 
I can easily attend a PTA meeting when called upon by my son's teacher and not have to reschedule a thousand times or send someone else on my behalf. I can easily attend to my mom's errands when she calls upon me, which is exactly what, um, there's more to life than actually working. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I'm flexible enough to be able to also be there for my family, mm -hmm. That is everything for me. That's interesting. What are yes. you telling me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all, all right. Yes. So, so let's uh, conclude this uh, because yeah. um, one must say that um, she has been mentoring uh, both men and women. Yes. And for you here, you're saying that um, having reliable staff is one of the biggest challenges. Yeah. So from where you are, what yeah. do you think needs to be done so that in the next, let's say, decade or the next two decades, you have more um, uh, women in business, but not just that, but mm -hmm. also successful businesses that in, uh, also in, this, in sectors that would be predominantly uh, uh, by men. All women need are tools to take them to the next level. Information, access to information, um, access to finance. Um, when you give a woman information, like Marcy said, mm -hmm. she gives it out to the rest both men and women. So access to information, access to technology so that um, if you want to scale, because we know in this day and age, technology is extremely important to scale. So access to technology, access to information, access to finance. Mm -hmm. Even my one year business is still struggling with cash flow, that I must tell you. Right. So access to finance is also another uh, propelling agent to taking your business to the next level. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, thank you so much, uh, Penny, and uh, for making time for us. Um, we'll be talking about uh, how to separate uh, the cash flow for the business and cash flow for itself mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that uh, the business remains um, sustainable. But thank you for your time. Uh, we'll right. be joined by one uh, Chibet after the break. So stay tuned to Business Now. Right.